Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz, and here is your detailed Australian winter weather forecast for winter season 2024. We're going to be covering temperature, rainfall and snowfall as well, and taking a talk at what could be the big threats this winter season for your location. So make sure you watch to the end to get a detailed forecast. We'll start things off with New South Wales. We'll cover New South Wales, then Victoria, uh, move around to South Australia and Tasmania and finish things off with the West Australian Outlook. Just to consider subscribing to the second account for Cyclone coverage, Cyclone's X. Extra. There'll be a link in the description. Here's what it looks like. Make sure you go and show some love over there. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel as well. But let's get stuck into it for your winter weather forecast for 2024. So we're going to start things off with rainfall. Here is a look at the Bureau of Meteorology's rainfall map. The chance of exceeding median rainfall for the months of June, July and August. And you can see quite a lot of greens and blues on this map, especially across more arid regions of southern Australia and also along the eastern coast as well, outside of Sydney and Brisbane. Now that means that there is a 60 to 75% chance of exceeding median rainfall for those locations. Uh, some notably drier spots include coastal regions of South Australia and some parts of of Western Australia as well but apart from that it's average to above average across the nation which compared to the recent couple of months of extreme dry weather across Western Australia especially it's going to be a nice break to see some average to above average rainfall through there and I've got a lot to say about this because I'm not expecting a long winter I'm expecting a short sharp and nasty winter especially with the southwestern corners of Western Australia and also for Tasmania in particular we'll start things off as promised with the eastern coast this is a 75% percent chance rather of exceeding the rainfall on this graph you got the legend on the right hand side of your screen you can see a 75 percent chance of exceeding at six to eight hundred millimeters for some parts of tasmania for just june july and august so in some of the wettest locations you'd be averaging 150 to 300 millimeters a month especially through parts of tasmania 75 percent chance is what i like to call basically guaranteed as per the bureau of meteorology's forecast the bureau of meteorology is generally very conservative so 75 percent you can call it as good as done. This is sort of the minimum rainfall that you could expect this winter season for June, July and August. I'm expecting a dry run up to winter. I don't think there's going to be much rainfall uh, throughout May and that's why I'm not including May in this forecast here. I'm just going to say it for the entirety of Southern Australia. May is going to be a dry month and it will be a long run up to winter but when June hits and when those first fronts really start to hit the coast it is going to be on and I think this winter will be a nasty one especially for exposed areas in Tasmania. South Australia and also parts of Victoria too and there could be a few east coast lows as well so be watching out for those. On the upper echelon of the forecast this is a 25% chance of exceeding at this rainfall amount here. You can zoom into your location as well on the video. Uh, taking a look uh, for the wettest locations in Victoria a 25% chance of exceeding nearly a metre of rainfall by the looks of things in the Victorian highlands. You're talking 300 millimetres a month. I reckon there's a chance that some places especially in June and July you're talking maybe 150 50% uh, of the median rainfall, especially through Tasmania and Victoria, um, especially. They're going to be the wet zones and also parts of coastal New South Wales between Sydney and Brisbane as well. I reckon there's a good chance we see one or two East Coast lows start to wrap themselves up in the winter season through July and maybe even into August. Uh, always a chance August and September as things start to become a little bit more tropical, especially as you get further north. Uh, but I do think there is a good chance we do see some significant East Coast low activity through there bounce over to Western Australia and take a look at a more detailed forecast here. You can see this is uh, the big circle that's over the screen right now is where we're expecting slightly above average to significantly above average rainfall. I think around the coastlines it's going to be more sort of around the average for the winter season but as I have been saying for the last uh, couple of minutes I reckon those fronts that we do get are going to be sharp and mean they are. They're going to be cruel uh, that's for sure especially to exposed locations. They're going to be windy, they're going to be wet, they will be strong Sea temperatures in the, especially in the Indian Ocean, near Western Australia and in the Southern Ocean, they've never been high. They're about three degrees Celsius above average right now. So there is going to be a lot of evaporation as these fronts move towards Australia. Uh, and that's going to continue June into July. August, things might die off a little bit. They'll start to get, uh, you'll start to find more tropical sort of rainfall and weather patterns for New South Wales and Queensland. But I do think June and July, those cu first couple of fronts, they're normally quite strong and they're going to be especially strong this year. And I would be willing to bet quite a lot on top of that. 
Now taking a look at Western Australia, once again starting things off with the essentially guaranteed amount of rainfall, the 75% chance. I haven't seen such a wide expanse of blues on the 75% chance in quite a while. In fact, in my five years of looking at weather models, I have not seen such an expanse of significant rainfall for Western Australia. And that's compared to no uh, notably wet winter such as 22 and 23, uh, where we had some pretty significant rainfall, especially in June and July. I do think that the southwest corner of Western Australia is going to have a pretty pretty nasty winter season. Again, not too much uh, in terms of rainfall. It's not going to be dramatically above average, but I do think that the fronts we get every one or two weeks, they are going to be strong, they are going to be mean, and you're going to see a lot of severe weather warnings for some locations, um, especially as you get further south as well. Uh, some of the Darling Ranges expecting at least 500 millimetres as well this uh, winter season. I haven't seen uh, such a high amount of rainfall on the forecast for quite a while for June, July and August. This doesn't include May or September. And as we know, May and September, if we get a big front in either of those, that could add another 100 millimetres either side to the winter rainfall accumulation, which would push annual accumulations towards 800 millimetres um, if this uh, forecast does uh, max out. So we, we could be in for a pretty wet 2024 and especially compared to what we've seen over the past couple of months around Perth. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a wet year, but I do think winter is going to bring us right up towards average or maybe even slightly above average in terms of rainfall. And again, from the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast, a 25% chance of at least 700 millimetres falling for some locations in the Darling Ranges around Serpentine, Jarradale, and uh, Dwelling Up. They could be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations there. Um, I reckon Perth is in for at least 350, 400 millimetres this winter season, maybe even a little bit more than 400 millimetres. Uh, depending on whereabouts in Perth you're talking. But yeah, I, I do think that we're going to see some strong cold fronts this winter season. And once again, that's driven by the very much above average sea surface temperatures across uh, the Indian Ocean and the Southern Ocean as well. There's going to be a lot of evaporation in these fronts right up towards the coastline. And you know how we typically get one or two cold fronts where we get this big stretch of thunderstorms extending down the coastline uh, as they approach the coast and essentially make a landfall? I do think that there'll be an above average amount of events like that. The news is going to have an absolute field day on this winter, that's for sure. I don't mean to scare people by this forecast, by the way. I mean, it's going to be a normal to slightly above normal winter season in terms of uh, severity, uh, but it still could be a significant winter season in terms of cold fronts. And it's always good to heed those be weather warnings when they do come out. Make sure you're uh, battening down things that might fly around in the backyard because you just, it's much better to be safe than it is to be sorry. On to the second part of the video, we're going to be talking about temperature this winter season. And let me tell you, it is a whiteout in terms of above average temperatures. Uh, as I've been talking, for maximum temperatures and minimum temperatures, we're looking at above average across the nation. In fact, an 80% chance of above average uh, temperatures, especially across the uh, southwestern parts of Australia and Western Australia, uh, for the coastal parts around Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, and for the majority of Tasmania as well. The only notably cooler spots where we're not expecting such ridiculously elevated chances of above average temperatures uh, would be in the Northern Territory and some pockets of South Australia and Queensland. But once again, uh, elevated temperatures can be expected this winter season. It's going to be a warm one where I'm expecting the mean temperature to be about three degrees Celsius above average um, on maximum and minimum temperatures. And again, that's reciprocated amongst the minimum temperatures as well. You can see that here. Uh, as we just switch through uh, minimum temperatures as well, significantly above average. However, I would also like to note that with the passage of stronger cold fronts, we're going to get more cold air dragged up. So there will be some very cool nights, especially across Western Australia and South Australia. I see they're uh, having some very cool nights this year. There's a good chance that locations will get below zero on multiple nights of this year. Maybe even some locations that threaten all time minimum temperature records because of the severity of these cold fronts that I'm expecting to make passage through. And that's why minimum temperatures aren't as much of a whiteout of as being above average as maximum temperatures are. I do feel like there will be some very severely cold nights across Western Australia and South Australia. And I mean, you always get those cold nights across the Great Dividing Range as well. Tasmania, not so much. I think that they're going to remain pretty wet all year, uh, all winter season rather, which means that their minimum temperatures will be average to slightly above average or significantly above average by the looks of things. But yeah, it is going to be a warm winter, that's for sure. And just hammering that home here, the chance of exceeding the median maximum temperature is at least 80% across all of the nation, except for some areas in the Northern Territory. And that's 
not really classifiable as winter. And even then, they're still at 80% chance or thereabouts of exceeding the median maximum temperature. So we're probably going to have one of the hottest winters on record. Of course, with winter, it's not going to be scorching hot. We're not going to be seeing 35 or 40 degree days. But I do expect minimum temperatures and maximum temperatures to be at least three or four degrees Celsius above average. They will be warm, uh, although not seriously warmer. It's actually going to feel hot and we're going to be in uh, shorts and shirts weather. Uh, we'll still definitely need those jumpers and coats, especially in the height of winter after those significant front steps for sure. And now also moving on towards snowfall. I've highlighted the areas that are expecting some snowfall or significant snowfall this uh, season. I'm going to say that average snowfall is expected across Tasmania. It's not, not going to be crazy. With above average temperatures, um, I don't think that there's going to be significant snowfall accumulations at any point. But because of the severity of some of these cold fronts, I do feel like Tasmania will actually end up receiving average snowfall accumulations. And of course, around Threadbow, Kosciuszko, uh, Mount Hodden, those sort of areas in the uh, highlands of Victoria and New South Wales average to slightly above average snowfalls. And that will be driven by stronger than expected cold fronts that will be moving through. So looking like it's going to be a, not a snowy winter per se, but it will be a snowier winter in some locations, expecting some significant snowfalls. We've already had some snow to start off winter season 2024, a couple of centimetres. I mean, that would seem to be completely gone and melted. Uh, and hopefully we do see some snowfall before June, but I don't think there'll be anything significant until at least the end of May, maybe even into early June. There'll be plenty of coverage on this channel regarding Australian weather across the winter forecast as well. So make sure you are staying tuned for that. And also across into Western Australia, I know it's not shown on this map, but the Stirling Ranges, they always have one or two snow days in the year. I'm yeah, planning to go down and maybe see one or two snow days down in Bluff Knoll. It's a bit of a trek from Perth, but I'll be willing to do it, especially for the footage. Um, and the prong wraps as well, every other year they get a light dusting of snowfall and there's certainly a chance of that happening this year. I get a few questions, well I'm expecting to get a few questions about Darling Range snowfall. Every now and then the extreme highest locations in the Darling Ranges of Western Australia do get a very light dusting of snowfall. It never settles but it's kind of a 1 in 10 year event. And because I'm expecting intense cold fronts this season, I would not be surprised if there is a very light dusting of snowfall, maybe around Mount Cook or so forth in the Darling Ranges, but certainly not up towards Perth. I mean, that is completely off the cards. There's a chance that Hobart might receive a dusting or two of snowfall, nothing that settles though. And a couple of mountains up in the northern parts of New South Wales, up towards Torrey, they could receive some snowfall as well this winter season. So yeah, a very short and sharp winter can be expected. And just to recap things as well, um, and then I'll tell you how to prepare adequately for cold fronts, we're probably going to be seeing um, a lower than average rainfall in the run up to winter. So I don't think we're going to be seeing significant cold fronts until at least mid or late May, especially as you get up in towards New South Wales and Western Australia. Tasmania, they should be getting those significant fronts from about now, but especially as you get further north, I don't expect anything in terms of severe weather until at least late May, even into early June. So it'll be a late start to winter. Uh, that's for sure. But it, once she comes, she's going to come in very, very hot. It will be short, it will be sharp, and it will be nasty. Any questions that you have regarding the winter forecast, then leave them in the comment section down below. If you want to keep tracking tropical cyclones around the world with me, then subscribe to the second channel, Cyclones Extra. We're hoping to grow that to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and your support would really mean a lot. Thank you so much for watching this winter weather forecast. If you haven't already, leave a like, subscribe, and a special shout out to the channel sponsors as well. Their name's on screen right now. But yeah, bring on winter 2024 and bring on some rain to the Perth area because we are thirsty, let me tell you. And yeah, if I haven't answered your question specifically, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. I'd be willing to answer a detailed forecast for your specific location. I know I've neglected Northern Australia here, but it's kind of just going to be an average winter season. I mean, very little rainfall outside of the Daintree and the Cassowary coastline. They always receive rainfall pretty much year round up there, and they are expecting average rainfall. But yeah, in terms of temperature and also conditions across Northern Australia, it will be a stock standard dry season. It is not going to be different from previous dry seasons. We're going to be in a neutral El Nino La Nina, so we're not expecting anything crazy in terms of conditions uh, in the northern parts of Australia. It's just going to be the climate drivers in the Indian Ocean that really manipulate the climate for southern Australia. It's not going to be El Nino or La Nina like it has been in recent winters. But yeah, as I keep on saying, bring on winter 2024 and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.